Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank and today I'm going to show you how to build a 3D print farm. Okay, so let me explain. I already have a print farm and a lot of you guys know that. I need to move it though. I need to bring my print farm back inside. Now I'm going to be doing this for two reasons. First, I just moved to the lower east coast of the United States and it actually gets a little colder out here than I was originally anticipating. It's the end of January and right now it gets so cold at night that a lot of my printers won't even heat up and power on. Now obviously I can wait for it to warm up. I can't, I won't print as much here in the winter. However, I have a lot of projects going on. I have my Etsy shop going and I need to produce prints. Now a temporary solution for this was I moved a couple printers into our guest room up here. However, that takes away one of our bedrooms and that's really not a long-term solution. Another big reason I need to do this is because we're actually going to be renovating our garage because this is going to continue to be a persistent problem year after year after year. We're going to be redoing our garage and getting it insulated with an HVAC system and heating and cooling. So I need time to take the printers out of there, do the renovations and put them back in. Now, obviously I can't have the printers in there while we're doing the renovation. So again, I need somewhere to put them, but luckily I found a space. This is a room downstairs in the front of our house. Uh, originally, it was kind of just full of extra stuff because we already have a living room and a dining room. This space was just kind of collecting dust. Now we do have future plans for it, but as it goes for right now, for a few months, I can use this as a nice little printing space. So I wanna take you guys through that process of what it's gonna look like, getting the shelves set up, getting all the printers plugged in, things to look for when you're running multiple printers. And by the end of this, hopefully I'll have a pretty viable print farm that'll get me through the winter months. So here's my current print farm rack setup. I have a whole other shelf system here. Some printers are already moved into the house, but I need to get the rest of them off of here, start disassembling these shelves and get them in the house. I'm really hoping I can get all three shelving systems in there against that wall. Maybe I'll block off that door in the corner. We haven't been using it for the past few months anyway. It's been blocked off. So uh, yeah, let's get all this cleared off, get the shelves apart and get them inside. All right, I have the shelves kind of taken apart. I'm gonna see if I can get this whole frame in through the door and into my house. I really hope I can. Let's find out. All right, so lighting in here is kind of trash right now because we only have one lamp over there, but they all fit. I had to block off that door. It goes into our hallway. It's not a big deal. So all three fit. I brought all the cables in here. I got some zip ties and I'm gonna work on some cable management. I'm gonna focus on utilizing this power outlet, another power outlet that's down there because I can't put all the printers to one. Alright, so we brought the printers in here. I have a power strip going here. And since we're eventually going to be converting this room, I didn't mind cutting a notch down here in the bottom so the cable could go through. So I have the electricity spread through a couple different plugs. There's one power outlet in there. There's one sitting back there. And then there's one over uh, here on the wall. So again, just a little bit of cable management. Everything looks pretty nice. The only problem I had was getting the Ender 3s in here. If you offset them just a little bit, they line up a lot better without colliding with each other. I really wanted to put the Enders up there and you can see where I scratched my ceiling. We're gonna have to do some touch up. So that kind of stinks. I was hoping to have a line of Enders up there and all my bigger printers down here. I'm probably just gonna put all my filament up here like I had in the garage because it's just wasted space at this point. And then over here, I'm clearing all of this out. And then I'm gonna have a bunch of extra tools, a bunch of extra parts kind of spread around. 
So that'll be really nice and handy. I got my Wi-Fi cameras in here, and then I also have um, ring alert smoke detectors. So if anything ever does start to go wrong in here, something starts to smoke out, we'll all get notifications on our phone. And then the last thing I'm gonna do over here, we're actually selling these couches. So once these are picked up, I'm gonna move some stuff out from that area, and then I'm gonna have another shelf over there, and that's gonna hold my CR10 Max and my CR10 S4, my two big printers, and that is specifically why I have this power strip sitting over here, and those are the plugs that are gonna go into it. So I'll have even more printers over here. And last night I just ordered a fourth Ender 5 Plus. So all four are gonna be there and I love how they fit. I've talked about this before. They fit just barely in between these rails. So I have a lot more organizing to do. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are guys. Everything's pretty much set up how I need it to be. I went through a lot of the cable management. I played around with a couple different configurations for the printers, and this is ultimately what I'm gonna land on for the next couple months. Let me take you through a little bit of it and explain why I made the choices I did. Some extra things that I think could help you guys if you're running multiple printers and just uh, maybe some problems I had too. So as I said before, this is where I was gonna have my little Ender 3 slash Voxel Lab Aquilas. And this is actually where the first problem I ran into occurred. I couldn't stack the three next to each other without offsetting the printers, but it does work. The printers go up and down just fine. And I was able to print out a couple little test prints, like this cute little coin and everything printed perfectly with just a little bit of cable management on this large power strip. Now this strip itself is overkill. Obviously there's a lot of plugs on it. I'm not gonna use all of them. There's no need. Um, the electric in my house isn't as strong as my garage so I'm not gonna be able to have all of these printers on at once and I know that's probably what a lot of you are wondering so why even have them all this gives me the option of variety if I need a bunch of small prints done I can power up all my enders at once if I need my ender 5 pluses for larger faster prints I can have them it's a little bit of a balance I can roughly have about eight of them on at once with a little bit of consideration taken in for the larger printers but overall I'm just gonna be kind of balancing back and forth between most of them now the next issue I had was actually two of my voxel lab aquilas aquilas whatever um one of them is currently having a thermal runaway issue i believe one of the be uh, wires on the bed is broken i have to take this one apart and then the other one is having a firmware freeze issue which i've never had before out of the three of them but apparently this is a little bit of a common issue i gotta look into the firmware but that's just something you're gonna run into when you have multiple printers not all of them are gonna work perfect all the time so for the time being i've placed my new ender 3 s1 that i just got done reviewing that's gonna pick up some of the slack and you can see the other um Aquila, Aquila printing just flawlessly. That, oh wow, that is, that is super shiny. That's some, yeah. That is some super nice silk. Next up, we have my two CR10S Pro V2s sitting here. These are probably my two most reliable printers down here. These are my cubed printers. These are good for just reliability and speed. My Flash Forge Adventurer 4 and then my Sir Moon D1. Um, these things don't miss a beat, but they're a little bit of a smaller build plate. They don't move the rack too much at all. So I don't have to worry about any of the vibrations transmitting through. And that was a question a lot of people had. Blue, what are you doing? Busted. Maya. Yeah, anyway, a lot of people had questions about the vibrations of the printer, and I'm not printing at 200 and 300 millimeters a second. I don't need to worry about the vibrations going through these racks. Now, these are the same ones I got at Lowe's. They really don't move that much at all. I, I don't need to worry about that, and they're pushed up against the wall. If you really want to be secure, you could screw them into the wall. Last are my behemoths. We have my um, CR10 S4, my CR10 S5, and my CR10 Max. The only downside to large printers like this, they need so much room to slide back. A giant bed slinger like this is, is kind of a pain to have because it needs a lot of depth to it. And that's another reason I didn't move my Solval SVO3s in here. I don't have room for them. I've also gone and added some magnetic racks right here so I can always have some tools in between the printers at quick grab, very easy to do. I can just put them up and I have another one there for just ease of maintenance. All my filaments up top, or at least what's left, I need to put in some orders, but the racks hold it all just fine. Over here is a little storage area. I'm gonna populate with tools. Um, down below, I just have a couple extra beds and miscellaneous parts I'm not gonna be using too often, including the uh, famous googly eyes. I have a little quick maintenance kit that has some extra nozzles and extruders, 
extra Bowden tube, the stuff I'm going to go through more often than anything else. I do need to put some extruders on it. I have my half open filament rolls that I try to use as much as possible so I'm not wasting any filament and just a couple other miscellaneous things. A scale is a really great thing to have for measuring how much filament is left on a spool. I have some Wi-Fi sockets that I'm going to be setting up. And here is a point that people always ask me about, am I running Octoprint? Now this is something I definitely get asked a lot when people are saying, oh my God, how are you running so many printers without any Wi-Fi management system or something like Octoprint? I personally don't like Octoprint. There's a lot you have to do to set up and get the printers working with it. It has finicky problems with touch screens and I'm just, I'm not a fan of the system. I'd rather use a solid SD card. And when I'm using this print farm, I'm typically, typically printing a lot of the same stuff. So all I have to do is save the file to my desktop pop in a few SD cards, copy it, and then bulk load it all. And then I can put it all across the printers and plug and play. I feel like if you're smart about this method, it can really pay dividends. And what I also do is I save this G-code. If I have a file I know that works on my Ender 3s, I'll keep that on my computer because I need to print another Iron Man helmet or another Nova helmet. I can just drop that G-code back onto the SD cards and boom, away we go. And this way I don't have to worry about Wi-Fi cutting out, I don't have to worry about my computer going to sleep. The SD cards just seem a lot more reliable to me. Maybe in the future I'll upgrade to something, but who knows. The last question a lot of people have is air quality. Now, I know this is in my house, but this room is about to be closed off and we are gonna get some air purifiers. Having a couple printers near your living space probably typically isn't gonna be a problem, but when you're running this many printers as constantly as I'm going to be, and eh, microplastics might start to become an issue and I wanna be safe for that. So I will have some air purifiers and I am mostly only printing in PLA and PLA pluses. I'm not printing with ABS inside and maybe the most exotic I would go is some PETG and maybe some TPU. I'll do my best to link some of this stuff in like an Amazon car or just other links like the shelves, some of the monitoring systems, and even some of the printers. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, you want to know more about my little print farm or anything featured in here, please leave a comment down below. But that does it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.